Now, people would generally argue that any escort mission probably qualifies on a terrible escort missions list. They literally are one of the worst things in gaming, but I've really tried to whittle it down to the worst of the worst here. There's nothing that muddies the hero story quite like being followed by holding the hand of, or in some cases, literally carrying another person along with you. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are the 10 most broken escort missions in gaming history. Number 10, Princess Ruto in Jabu Jabu's Belly, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. There's a decent chance I may be unlocking a memory here because when I initially thought back to Ocarina of Time, I thought there were no escort quests. And then the nightmare whale full of holes and the girl who refused to move her legs came back to mind and yeah, that was a time I do not want to revisit. The reason Princess Ruto is just scraping in on this list is at least she straight up refuses to walk, so she can't exactly get far if you drop her. On the other hand, she straight up refuses to walk. For the uninitiated, Link's job, and therefore your job, is to save Princess Ruto from inside Jabu Jabu's belly. Not only do you have to carry her around, she's super rude about it, has a tendency to fall through holes, and if you leave her behind, she'll revert back to the original spot she fell to in the beginning, and you have to go get her. The pros are she can't die and you can shuck her at enemies. The cons are pretty much everything else. Number 9. For Pete's sake, Earthworm Jim. Normally dogs and games make everything better. Not so with the Jekyll and Hyde stylings of Peter Puppy. The level for Pete's sake features a clueless dog jovially strutting his way through the stage, but he'll require your help. He can't jump without you and if he takes any amount of damage, he turns into a snarling murder dog who bites you, zapping you back to earlier in the level with less health. Yeah, hard left there. The level isn't awful in and of itself, but having to redo parts just because this dog got himself shot is super annoying. Also, the snarling purple fleshy mass that he turns into is straight up terrifying. If that sounds crappy, Earthworm Jim 2 had you running back and forth to stop tossed puppies from splatting on the ground. So that's a whole new level of agonizing. Number 8. Galen's Escape, World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is notorious for its crappy escort missions, possibly none more famous than Galen, who seems to have made it his life's work to make your job as tough as possible in the staying alive department. In the Galen's escape quest, you find Galen in the Swamp of Sorrows, free him from a cage, and then he proceeds to try to get himself killed in various ways. Some players actually recommend emptying the swamp out of foes before you let this time bomb out. He moves fast, pulls a ton of enemies to you, and sometimes runs off and aggroes more enemies just in case you weren't having a crap enough time. He also has, like, no armor, isn't healable, and given the choice between wandering into an open area or an enemy camp, I reckon you can figure out which one he'd choose. Not fun. Number 7, Shiva, Resident Evil 5. I know this is the first survival horror game on this list, but boy howdy is it not the last. Can I pull off boy howdy? I feel like I definitely can't, but let's talk about something even more horrible than having to hear me say that. Escorting Shiva. Resident Evil 5's Shiva Alomar may be a stone cold fox, but if you don't have a friend to play as her, you're at the mercy of her AI, which, to be nice about it, leaves a lot to be desired. Essentially, what you'll be left with is a game that's basically one long escort mission. Despite looking precisely like the kind of badass you'd want watching your back, it turns out that due to some wildly clunky programming, she rampages through ammo and supplies like it's going out of style. And let's remember that this is a survival horror game where that stuff is pretty important. She also manages to consistently stand exactly where you don't want her to, and bizarrely defaults to using her weakest weapons. Of course, if she dies, you go back to the last checkpoint and lose years off your life out of frustration. Number 6. The Alchemist, Spyro 2. Now this one is admittedly actually pretty easy. Once you've played it enough times that you've actually memorized the pathing of this dude you're supposed to protect. Much like the dog that goes evil when he gets hit, in Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, you'll need to protect the alchemist as he persistently puts himself in harm's way by sidling right up to Earthshapers who want to kill him and you instead of doing literally anything else. The alchemist is delivering a potion to Hunter to cure his stone encased feet, but you'd assume he must have some kind of problem with the cheetah since he's doing his darndest to take the worst possible route. To add insult to maddening pathing injury, he pretty much dies after one hit, so if you played Spyro 2 as a kid, I'm guessing this is not a good memory. Number 5. Every Eileen Mission – Silent Hill 4 The Room Plenty of horror fans actually liked Silent Hill 4 The Room. What they didn't like was having to escort Eileen. It's at about the game's midpoint when Henry Townsend's neighbor Eileen is nearly beaten to death by Walter Sullivan. Now that's 
awful, but I'm betting you'll feel less and less sorry for her as the rest of the game goes on and her broken limbs become your problem. The fact that Eileen can't die sounds like it should take a load off your stress levels, but the game's endings actually change based on how much injury she sustains. Much like many of the other escortees on this list, Eileen is a dummy, or she's programmed to be a dummy. Either way, you end up babysitting a companion who, if you decide to give her a weapon, pointlessly tries to beat up on ghosts, brings a handbag to a shotgun fight, complains constantly, and is slow as hell. She fights slowly and poorly if she fights at all, she can't be healed, and she cuts your speed in half, so I hope you had fun in the first half of the game. Number 4. Natalia, GoldenEye 007 GoldenEye's Natalia may be a Russian super hacker, but judging by the amount of time it takes her to hack anything, she may not be a very good one. Whether she's at a computer or running alongside you, she's never not a pain. There's also a decent chance she magnetizes to gunfire, since her head always seems to be right between you and the guys who are shooting at you. GoldenEye 007 is an absolute classic, but the section where you have to defend Natalia while she's hacking may cause your eyeballs to pop out of your head. The enemies are infinitely spawning, Natalia is taking her sweet time, and when she's not actually hacking, she loves to run ahead of you, just in case she isn't already in somebody's sideline. Number 3. Legitimately every survivor mission, Dead Rising Dead Rising was a bit of a phenomenon when it came out in 2006, meaning A, you probably played it, and B, the escort missions probably sent you into a spiral. You see, the people of Willamette are so stupid, they may in fact deserve to be eaten by zombie hordes. Throughout the game, Frank comes across humans trapped by the undead who he needs to escort back to the safe room. But trying to save these guys from themselves is an absolute headache. They run into walls, sprint towards groups of enemies like they're meeting old friends, and even though they have weapons, they seem completely incapable of using them. It's easily the fastest way to make the zombie apocalypse even less fun. Number 2. Amy. Amy. You may not have come across the 2012 survival horror game Amy, and after hearing this entry, you're not going to want to. Instead of helping someone genuinely helpless through a crazy dangerous situation, you are the helpless person. That's more fun than being the protagonist, right? On top of that, your comrade isn't a gun-toting house of bullets and brawn, but a little girl called Amy. Okay, so she does have superpowers that help her kill zombies, but she's still a kid. And as I mentioned, you're helpless. It's still mind-boggling what sort of sadistic dev team decided this is what video games really needed. Get too far from your child's super savior, you die. Try to speed up from her absolute snail's pace, you die. I'm kind of cheating because this is a whole game and not a mission, but just take this as a PSA. Look, the concept is cool, the execution is absolutely brain-breaking. There's a reason this game is sitting at 25% on Metacritic. If you want to play a game where you escort around a kid with superpowers, trust me, go play A Plague Tale Innocence. Number 1. Emma Emmerich, Metal Gear Solid 2 If you played all of Metal Gear, then you probably knew this one was going to appear on this list. It's timed, it's underwater, and it's an escort mission. The unholy trinity of video games is here to mess up your day. The great thing about Emma Emmerich is that for the English VO, she's voiced by Jennifer Hale. And that's it, that's the only good thing about her. Now, I generally follow Hideo Kojima's wild ideas to hell and back, but this one is just bad. Emma's scared of water, which is a great start for this underwater mission, so you have to carry her everywhere Princess Rudo style. She's also scared of everything and screams at bugs on walls. On top of that, if she's spotted by the enemy, she'll simply sit down and wait for them to kill her, which is great since she's an AI program to not know how to hide in a stealth game. For a girl who hates bugs and water needing to be escorted through a bug-filled waterway, she ensures that every moment is as excruciating for you as I imagine it is for her. She's sort of all the worst things of every other escortee on this list combined, so here she sits in infamy in our top spot. You can, however, knock her out and drag her ass through the level, and trust me, you're probably gonna want to. Let me know down in that comment section which escort missions from video games drove you absolutely nuts. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You can come say hi to me on my Twitter, where I'm at JessMcDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more content.